Welcome back. We are here at the OpenStack Summit in Portland, Oregon. It's a beautiful day outside. Uh, you're in the Cube, SiliconANGLE's exclusive video production where we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we really take you into the events with the key players um, that are here to give you the, to give you the inside story. Uh, and we're really happy to be joined for this segment by um, David Floyer, our Wikibon analyst extraordinaire, who's, uh, who's sitting in for John, which we're happy. And we have Dave Cahill, who's the uh, Senior Strategic Alliances, right, for? Solid Fire. Solid, Solid fire. fire, sorry. It's been a long day already. <laughs> so, so I'm just going to kick it over to Dave, and why don't you give us a quick update on Solid Fire? And what you guys are trying to had a couple of uh, key announcements today. Yeah, sure. So uh, SolidFire is an all SSD storage system uh, targeted exclusively at large scale multi tenant cloud infrastructure uh, use case. And uh, obviously, uh, prevalent in that discussion as any is OpenStack, because all of our customers today, uh, when they have a conversation about deploying, managing, running a cloud, OpenStack's at the center of that. Um, so that's a key integration for us. Um, we have uh, invested in the OpenStack community uh, from very early on, and in fact, we're integral in helping extract the block storage project that is now Cinder out of the Nova project. Um, today, we announced some advanced developments there. We continue to lead the way in terms of the industry's broadest support for Cinder, um, ensuring that we have uh, compatibility with all of the Cinder-related features, including boot from volumes, uh, QoS, multi-instance backend, but also added beyond that as well. Um, so we're also driving meaningful ecosystem partnerships uh, with both Nebula and Rackspace Private Cloud, uh, and also starting to show off some of our early customer momentum with customers like Brinkster, uh, who are now deploying uh, SolidFire uh, behind their OpenStack-based cloud infrastructure. So trying to pull together um, more than just technology support, but support for the community, support for our partners, and also now uh, customer momentum as well. Great. So uh, the the SolidFire is obviously an all flash array, mm -hmm. and uh, um, can you what's the what's the thinking behind you f you supporting the uh, Cinder as opposed to others in this area, the more traditional storage arrays? What, what what is it that drove you to do it? What's important to the community for you doing this? Yeah, so I think our support for OpenStack and for Cinder really is. Uh, uh, a function of our focus on a specific customer set. And, and that customer set today is large scale uh, service providers, cloud providers, public uh, cloud infrastructure as a service. And those guys are looking at a few different building blocks behind their infrastructure. Um, one of them is absolutely OpenStack. The others are probably CloudStack or something like VMware. And you know, their goal is to deliver um, a, an integrated solution in support of particular cloud services. Uh, we need to be relevant in the OpenStack conversation. Uh, we need to be integrated out of the box. Uh, and also SolidFire has a lot of advanced functionality that we want to ensure is accessible natively through Cinder as opposed to a forcing a second or third integration point. Um, our goal is to ensure that storage can be dynamically adjusted, managed, provisioned, just like network and just like compute. And in order to do that, you have to drive API level integrations with the key frameworks that exist. And, and OpenStack is absolutely at the top of that list. Uh, and you can see 3,000 people here this week that it's only, uh, the momentum's only picking up. Absolutely, and congratulations on, on picking a, a winner like this uh, early <laughs> on. That's, uh, that's tough to do. But what sort of applications are driving the need for low latency? Um, why not just a simple, simple uh, traditional uh, disk drive array uh, that's out there and well understood? What, yeah. Uh, what, what, what things are you introducing that make it really different? So, so super low latency um, isn't necessarily the use case that, that we really care about most. Um, we're not going after the one or 2% of applications that need no, performance right. at any cost, right? We want to deliver consistent, predictable performance to thousands of applications in parallel. Where is that most prevalent? 
the, the cloud infrastructure use case. And that's where we see guys today um, demanding levels of quality of service. Once you can deliver QoS on a per application basis, you can bring that use case to life. You can host thousands of applications in parallel, essentially isolating them into their you know, virtual resource silo. They run next to each other unencumbered by the noisy neighbor. And that's the key uh, use case for us. Why can't disk do that? Because it's, it's more performance constrained. Um, our goal wasn't to deliver a really big footprint of IOPS or a really big footprint of capacity. It was let's deliver the optimal balance of both and then so let's deliver the technology that allows the customer to provision as they want across either depending on the needs of the application and not force some unnatural optimization based on the limitations of the infrastructure. Excellent. Excellent, okay. So uh, how's it going for SolidFire? You, uh, you've been a little later than you would hope to in terms of getting out your initial products, et cetera. How's it going? How's the business going? Uh, things are great. Uh, so uh, we, we had a, uh, an early access program that extended about uh, a little bit longer than a year. Uh, we announced uh, GA in November of last year uh, with four service providers as customers. Uh, we since follow on uh, from that momentum added a uh, you know, strong end of the year and early uh, good start to Q1 as well, continuing to drive uh, more points on the board in terms of meaningful customer deployments from uh, large scale service providers. Also seeing some really um, uh, genuine interest from uh, large enterprises that um, have an enterprise logo on their front door, um, but frankly under the covers look, feel, and run their business like they're a service provider. Yeah, so, so do you have any uh, success stories with OpenStack and Cinder that uh, you got in beta at the moment or you can talk about? Yeah, so one we actually included in our announcement today is Brinkster, uh, infrastructure as a service provider uh, out of Arizona um, who, who very much desired the need to deliver quality of service uh, to their customers, uh, eliminate the noisy neighbor problem, and evolve the complexion of their applications um, that they could host in their cloud infrastructure. And so, you know, for us, the reason customers seek out and, 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 and choose SolidFire is very much around business enablement, um, evolving from uh, hosting or managed services business to, to take the flag in this cloud opportunity. And they've used SolidFire as a bit of a, uh, an arms dealer in that regard to help them um, capture that flag. And so Brinkster, I think, has looked at a lot of different technologies uh, from a cloud perspective and settled on SolidFire. Um, but above that, more importantly, settled on OpenStack. And a key piece of that was that um, you know, we have the industry's most comprehensive support for Cinder. Um, we have uh, strong institutional knowledge for Cinder and um, just have been around and involved in the OpenStack community for, for quite some time. Excellent. Dave, tell us a little bit about the economics behind it because I think there's a pretty popular, and maybe it's a misperception, that drive arrays and, and kind of traditional drives are cheaper. Yeah. Um, and if you're saying that, that, that the driver of, of your business is not the super, super low latency, super yeah. high performance, it's more uh, consistency of, of delivery of service, how does that work in from an economic model to justify folks going with, uh, with that configuration, yeah. Yeah, so I think there's a few pieces to that. Um, the, the, the first is, you know, you have to be able to crack the code on the economics of Flash. Um, and, and, and you know, there's a continuum of, of mediums for different types of information. And you know, if you can crack the code on the economics of flash and open it up to a broader use case, um, you know, that's, that's part one. And how do you do that? Um, you can compress, you can dedupe, you can thin provision the data set um, to drive a much larger, larger um, effective capacity footprint versus relative raw capacity. Okay. And that's, you know, that is really important to open it up to a, a broader use case. It's driving down the effective cost per gig right. of flash. And this isn't a new story. We saw this with data domain. Once data domain cracked the code on the economics of disk for an archive medium, all of a sudden you push tape library to the right and insert a data domain into that discussion, a disk medium for archiving. We have customers today that are using all SSD platform for all of their cloud, solid fire. What have they done with their disk? They pushed it to the right and turned it into an object store. That, that trend will only continue to work in our favor as the economics of flash continue to go down. That's you know, economic uh, conversation one. Um, part two is around application density. If you can deliver a large bucket of IOPS that can host thousands of applications and then you can apply QoS to every single one of those applications, then your storage cost per application is dramatically lower. It's no longer a one-to-one -one storage to application ratio. Now it's one system and the cost of that system is amortized over thousands of applications. Your per application uh, cost for storage is significantly lower. That's the moment where guys start to get excited about the fact that this is not a, there's no longer that rigid binding between application and storage. When you can prosper from shared economics in a multi-tenant infrastructure, 
that's when guys forget about the fact you're talking about flash. They're talking about business enablement and economic prosperity for them. Because you've really changed the conversation. Once you've broken that one-to-one -one relationship, now it's a totally different kind of conversation. Once you get them over the fact that flash is not just performance at any cost, right. then they're ready to have the conversation about the operational benefits of QoS. So you have to kind of normalize before you can operationalize, but that sequence is something that people are getting more and more accustomed to. I was going to say, how do, how do you see the market kind of uh, recognizing that that part of the story and, and getting away from is just it's pure performance. You know, so I can only, we can only control so much of that and uh, you know, evangelism, we fully understand that we have to be out in front evangelizing the fact that Flash is for more than just the performance at any cost use case. We know we have to evangelize um, around the types of applications you can host once you drive QoS, but part of it's also just time, mm -hmm. familiarity. I mean, this conference two years ago was 500 people, 200 people on the second floor of the Intercontinental in Boston. Now it's 3,000 people in a convention center. Right, right. right. Time has allowed people to get more familiar with OpenStack and the use cases and how to use it. The same exact thing's going to happen with Flash, right? And, and, and the use cases and broadening of that and the opportunity for us will follow. Great. So just asking you, it's moving very fast, where do you think you are going to be as a, as a company and as part of OpenStack in one year, two years time? Wh what's, what's the outlook for uh, yourselves and for Cinder and for OpenStack? So, uh, you know, I, I think that the, the community momentum around OpenStack is phenomenal. Um, you know, we are going to continue to invest in this community. There's nothing stopping us. I mean, we, it's institutional for us, right? Our founder came out of Rackspace. He understands OpenStack. Yeah. Um, I, I think you're seeing, um, you know, there's only, there's limited options here right now. You're seeing some noise start to sort away and it's mostly Signal and you have OpenStack against CloudStack against VMware. Um, in some cases, you know, we're Switzerland and that we want all of them to do well because that's what we want whatever our customers want to do well from a stack perspective, frankly. Um, we want to be able to ensure that all of the advanced features we're developing um, are populated up through OpenStack and we can take advantage of those. So you will not see us at all decelerate our um, investment in OpenStack. Um, will the market vote away from OpenStack towards something else? I think that's to be determined. Uh, where I get nervous is if this evolves away from a community and more towards a standards body. And the bigger the vendors that kind of come in tops down, the more nervous I get. So the community's ability to, um, to hold those guys, yeah, hold yeah. those guys at bay, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't think. I mean, you know, you can throw money at this problem. Really, we want contributions, right? We want contributors, developers, uh, people evangelizing the story. I don't think OpenStack has a real problem with money right now. But to the degree that people are just kind of waving their hands and glomming on and tying their their wagon to this horse, um, that's when it starts to dilute the the community effort. And if the if the the big guys dilute the community, then you know that's a larger issue. Um, but we're going to watch it closely. And I think actually right now the complexion of the conversations at this conference are changing completely. Guys are now thinking about deploying. Um, they're they're not necessarily uh, super enthused with VMware's cloud strategy, and they want to look at alternatives. And so, um, OpenStack is as good a shot as any to take that flag. Excellent. Yeah, it's interesting because that's been a pretty consistent theme of the people that we've had on the cube over the last couple of days. Is people are contributing code, and they're, they're you know they're raising their hands. We want to contribute code. We want to be part of the code. You know, we got into it, we had our last speaker, John from Rax, we say, you know, we had guys that are in other open source communities and, and just kind of love the vibe, love being part of something that's bigger than the company, so we can keep the really smart guys, give them something that's evangelical and really groundbreaking to work on, and it seems to be uh, doing pretty well. But, but it's interesting that you said, you know, a good proper SWOT analysis are, you know, what are the threats? Um, to this thing going forward, and what yep. are the potential weaknesses? And that's a question I ask a lot of people. How many contributors do you have? So let me ask you, how many contributors do you have uh, contributing to the, uh, oh, to we, the open we source? We have one. Just one, yes, and, and okay. He's an, and he has he by himself, yeah. uh, you know, you can look by any contribution right. measurement yeah. you have. Um, John is a uh, you know f tr phenomenal contribution, but that's all that's all you need, yeah. right? Yeah. I, you know, I think what I what I don't what what you hear is, hey, we're all in. We've invested a ton of money. We're hiring tons of guys. Wrong approach. Yeah. Get a, get one guy and get him to start doing some bug fixes. Right. That's yeah. it. Just start contributing. Get him to go attend a meetup. Figure this thing out. Right. Don't do this tops down crap where you just say we're here and we're present. We're contr you know, more stake, less sizzle. And stake is showing up starting to fix bugs, taking on some grunt work, proving out your currency that you're here and you're legitimately looking to contribute versus just 
put out a press release and say, hey, I'm involved and glom on to the, what is what, you know, increasingly obvious uh, momentum that's going on here. Um, separating those two things out I think is important and we need more of the, uh, more of the stake. Well, that's the sizzle. Yeah. All right, well great, well thanks for, uh, for stopping by. Yeah, David absolutely. Cahill from Solid Fire, exciting stuff in, in solid state memory and, and, and really transforming the way that those, uh, that technology is applied to applications in the data center to really change the economics for what I think a lot of us at least, um, people like me th have really thought about using that type of technology and it really being kind of out of reach or still a little bit too expensive. So really changing the game uh, to be able to bring it into the house. So again, we are, we are here, you're uh, in the cube, we're at OpenStack Summit, great vibe, we got a full day for you. We're going to take a short break and be right back. <laughs>